Welcome to my YouTube automotive channel. In today's video I have a 2010 Ford Expedition Limited and I will show you how to remove and replace the main blind door actuator. This video will apply to Ford Expeditions made from 2007 all the way up to 2014. Okay, so first I will try to demonstrate what is happening with this Ford Expedition, how you change the ambient uh, temperature. There is like a loud banging noise coming from the dashboard. Okay, now you can hear it. Now, as per Ford, the whole dashboard would have to be removed for you to be able to access that actuator and remove all the screws and unplug it. But I did this in the past and I'm pretty sure I did it just by removing uh, the radio, the stream piece and by removing the glove box I was able to access that actuator. And in this video I will try to show you everything I did and how to replace it in uh, no longer than half hour. Okay, now the first thing to do is to remove this uh, plastic trim piece that's surrounding the radio and climate controls. The best tool to use would be a plastic uh, trim remover, that way you won't do any damage to the dashboard. If you don't have this kind of tool, then you can use a flat screwdriver or anything similar, you just have to be careful not to make any scratches. Okay, so I have a couple of these plastic tools actually. Okay, and once it pops out, you just want to do it all around on both sides. Okay. Okay, that's it. And now there is a couple of wires to disconnect in the back. To disconnect this one, there is like a small black clip which you want to press and just pull the wiring out. And this one is going to be the same thing, just the clip will be on the other side. So you want to press it and pull the wires out. The climate controls, you don't really have to disconnect it because you can lower this piece all the way down and have enough space here to work. Now the next thing to do, you'll want to remove the radio. And you can do that by unscrewing four screws. They should be seven millimeters, two on the right side and two on the left side. Okay, once you have those screws out, now you can gently pull the radio out and disconnect all the wiring from the back of the radio. Now, depending on your uh, Ford Expedition trim and radio options, you might have more or less wires in the back and pretty much you want to disconnect all of this. So this is pretty straightforward. All of these connections will have like a small clip on the top, which you want to press and pull the wiring out. This one, this one, this one, the big one. This guy. And this one is the radio antenna. Now you have the radio of the way and you should get access to the blend or actuate. Okay, so I will turn flash on my phone right now to show you that actuator. It's just inside there, you see it? So this black piece, this is your actuator. Now You'll have one electrical connection here on this side, which has to be disconnected. You have one screw here on this side. Now the problem is there is one more screw of the same kind all the way there in the back. And there is no way to access that one from this side. So that's why Ford suggested to completely take apart the dashboard so you can reach it from above. But it's doable from the glove box area, which I will soon, soon show you. Now, this is not the easiest thing to do, but you can start by removing that first screw and that's 8mm. So you can use either uh, 
a ratchet with a socket or a wrench key, whichever is easier for you. Okay, now once you have this uh, small screw out, the next thing you want to disconnect that electrical connector. Now this thing has like a small red safety clip inside, so first you want to pop that clip out. So you just want to pretty much push it out, just like this, you see? Up. Yeah, I lost it, I'll find it later. Anyways, you just have to push it out and then you can just disconnect it. There's like a small clip to push on top of this uh, uh, connector. Okay, now next thing to do, like I said, you'll want to lower the glove box so you can access that back screw and even uh, make your life easier disconnecting that, uh, that wire I just showed you. Now, to do that, you just want to open the glove box. Now, it's held here by two clips, uh, two black tabs, one here and one on the opposite side. So what you want to do, you just want to press this glove box here in and pull down. You see, there's this black tab that's just behind this. So you're supposed to do, to do this at the same time, both sides. Since I'm recording, I'll have to do side by side, right? It's gonna be a bit harder for me, but you see, this is the idea. And just lower it down. And now you'll be able to squeeze your hand inside here to that uh, electrical connector and to the uh, back screw. Okay, now I'll try to show you why we did that. Okay. And I'll show you my hand here, you see how much space I have here now through this side. I can easily disconnect this wire without any kind of problems and I can definitely access this uh, back screw here. Now, I didn't say this would be easy to remove, you'll still struggle to get that uh, back screw out, but still you don't have to uh, remove complete dashboard. You can remove that screw with either using a ratchet or using a wrench key, whichever is easiest for you. Like I said, it won't be easy, but it's doable. Okay, now I'll show you how to do it, you see? So you can squeeze your hand here. I couldn't find my 8mm uh, wrench key, but you can use 5 sixteenths. And yeah, take your time and slowly remove that screw and that's pretty much it. Okay, so it took me like 15 minutes to unscrew that guy, but okay. Here it is, a bit of blood on my hands, but that's all part of the job. Okay, and this is your blend door actuator. Now I will also show you here on my computer, on my parts supplier, so you pretty much have a couple of different part numbers. This is all aftermarket, doorman. If you wanna go with the OEM, then the best bet is just to call for dealership, give them your serial VIN number, and they will give you the right part number. I'm going always with aftermarket parts just because they are cheaper, right? So um, with doorman, it depends if your vehicle has dual zone, auto temperature control or single zone. Now mine has, mine is limited. So this is the one I need, uh, 604252. If you have only one zone, you'll need this one, 604242. You can see they are completely different actually, you see? You can even see by that. Other thing you can do, you can also just uh, get your old part, read the part number of it, and Google it and see which which aftermarket part uh, fits the best. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and educational. If it was, please like it and consider subscribing to my YouTube automotive channel. On my channel there is lots of how-to videos, do-it-yourself videos, car reviews, product reviews and other similar automotive topics.